Hey gang, what's going on? And welcome to Talking Vegas All Day with K.A. I'm your host, K.A. And on today's episode, I'm joined by J.A. Hello. And we're reviewing our Vegas Easter trip. So get ready for a big episode today. But before we get started, make sure to hit that like button, click subscribe, and punch that notification bell so you get up-to-date information when we drop new episodes. Also, make sure to check out our podcast on Apple and Spotify, as well as other podcasting networks. Get ready for some video that's going to drop on the channel, as well as a couple other new episodes that I'm going to be debuting in the coming months. But without further ado, let's get started on today's episode of Talking Vegas All Day with K.A. This trip has been a redo. We were supposed to go last Easter, right after COVID hit. We had a trip planned and we decided to cancel. And of course, everything shut down. Also, I wanted to check, just see what it was like during this pandemic, kind of how things were going. So we decided to go out March 31st, April 5th. The first two nights at the Bellagio, we got in and well, we had a little bit of a mishap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was kind of annoyed, but uh, anyway, so what happened, if you are a M Life member, you can actually check in online through your smartphone and they get you a key, which in theory is a great thing, especially with COVID going around. We checked in on the app, get to the hotel after we got our car, lug through our hotel, they have a bellman there that scanned our ID. He was like, all right, you're good to go. Get on the elevator. Go up. I put the key card in. I opened up the door and there's a lady sitting on a chair in the room that was supposed to be our room. And it was really awkward. So now I'm pissed. We walk back down to the front desk. Yeah. And mind you, like this was about 9 p.m. Pacific time. It had been a really long day. So this is like midnight our time, what we're used to. And luckily, though, the front desk was amazing. You know, she corrected it and we got upgrade to a nice fountain view room. Well, we'll it take worked care. out for the best. Yeah. Exactly. I thought the room was really nice. There is a room tour I will be dropping. The view was great. It was incredible. Yeah. I thought the beds were nice. The mm -hmm. shower was great. There's a nice big bathtub, a nice big walk-in shower. The toiletries are very nice. Like I said, the view is really good. We had a view of the fountain and the strip. So no complaints there. I mean, we wouldn't have been on the fountain view side had the uh, mix up not happened. So all's well that ends well there. Overall, very happy with the room. And then the pool, I thought the pool was very elegant. You know, it was much more crowded than I expected it to be. But overall, one of the nicer pools on the strip I've been to. Mm -hmm. The other really neat thing was I really just loved the landscaping. It's just really nice. It's that Mediterranean feel. It's very relaxing. Except yes. for the kids that kept yeah. running over our stuff. Yeah, we did make the mistake of going to the pool that was kind of like the family pool. But other than that, we had a great time at the pool. Yeah. And then uh, for gambling, you didn't really do much gambling, did you? I didn't do any gambling. Yeah, I did a little bit of gambling. Did my usual video poker. Right now, one thing I did notice is the odds are a lot tighter. They weren't as... How should I say it's generous? They're never generous on the strip, but it was very like you win and then for like eight or nine hands, you weren't winning. Where usually it's like, oh, we're just gonna keep dragging you along and then you'll start losing. This one was like, no, no, no. Oh, oh you won, oh, no, no, no. But they were much better with the uh, complimentary drinks. So when you're playing, they were kind of like, oh, you're playing, okay, here, here you go. Where sometimes like, oh, you have to be on max or like top end. This time they're like, oh, you're playing. Here you go. Other observations. The casino was packed. Social distancing is very difficult. The one thing I also noticed was a lot of the shops were closed, except for a few here and there. The hours were odd at some places. They closed kind of early if they were open. Usually it's like everything's open at once and that this time it wasn't. Most people were compliant with wearing the masks. Yeah, you have a few ding-dongs not wearing them and um, whatnot, but you know, definitely getting more on the crowded side. 
The conservatory was really nice, though. So. Yeah, that was actually something I wanted to talk about. So they were doing their spring exhibit, and we're going to drop a video of that. And I thought it was the colors were beautiful. It was more of what would you say? It was kind of like... I mean, there were like hummingbirds and flowers. They had kind of... Um, they had butterflies. They had tulips with Dutch setting there, you know, with yeah, like the windmill they had, like, and the clogs and stuff. Yeah, it was kind of like multicultural sort of. Yeah, that's what I would have to say because there was like the Asian section on mm -hmm. the other side. It was very far east kind of asian section that was very well done I, they had the mm -hmm. dragons and like just the temples yeah. and all that oh, i yeah. really like that we never disappoint there unfortunately we kept saying we were going to walk through it during the day i thought the day actually from far looked even better i thought the night mm -hmm. was beautiful but yeah. the day just like the colors really oh, stood yeah. out sandeli's that new brunch place was kind of opening up actually i did a little research on it. it's run by carbone guy that runs carbone at the aria and i checked out the menu it's, it's moderately priced i was kind of like oh so this is brunch place you know you can get like a bagel sandwich but you can also get like you know oil infused salmon and you know eggs and all that we did eat there we ate noodle um and we will talk about that on the next episode but moving forward here, I want to now shift directions and we're going to talk about the three nights at the D. We checked into the D. Another funny story, I work for Mad Hatter Adventures Travel Company and I had booked this on our company's website through one of our suppliers. We got there and I was like, wait a minute, I never got a notification. So I'm thinking, oh uh, no, did something go wrong? Well, luckily it didn't. We were able to check in. We were on the 12th floor, had a nice view. And we were on the 22nd floor. Oh, we were on the 22nd? Yeah, we, we were on the 22nd. Okay. The room this time I felt was very basic. It was, yeah, I mean, we've been in nicer ones there. I mean, it's yeah, basic. This was like my probably like 12th or 13th time there. It was very basic, but hey, we had a good time. Bathroom <laughs> is always is great. View was great out the window. And to be honest, we didn't spend that much time in the room when we were there other than to rest our heads at night. The pool there was closed. Yeah, well, the, the D's pool isn't much to talk about, no, to be honest. No, and if you've never been to the D's pool, it's you have to like go outside of the hotel kind of to where the valet is. And it's like kind of hidden amongst some hedges and concrete wall that borders the street corner. And it's basically a very small rectangular pool with like a little hot tub. Um, there, yeah. and the hot tub's not even that hot. Mm. I've never had it hot. And so let me put it to you this way. There are homes with bigger pools. I'd than say them. my mom's pool is comparable to the size of the I, I, Right? Pool. We just checked out Bar Canada. I was expecting a little bit more for a sports book, kind of like big theme, but it's just, it's nice. I mean, it's just kind of like a bigger sports book. I felt like it's much bigger and nicer than the old sports book, which was like a couple seats and that was that. I personally was expecting a little bit more from the reviews I was hearing. And I was a little underwhelmed, but at the same time, hey, it, it looks like a fun time. This was like one of the first trips we didn't really hang out to D. Yeah, we really didn't. Well, we spent time over at Circa. Oh, and we'll talk about that yeah. another time, because I think this is going to end up being a two-part episode this week. But, I mean, other than going to Coney Island Dogs, which their hot dogs are amazing. I really didn't play much up there, because usually we play a couple nights up there at the slots and at View Bar. We really didn't do any of that. No, yeah. Played some uh, OMG kittens. <laughs> that was at Circa, though. I know, that was at Circa. So anyway, just a couple general observations. The flight, you know, I've heard on here, you know, flights are dead. I've talked to some people on Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, I've asked the question. People are like, ah, you know, my flight was dead. But then I've heard people say it was full. Our flight was totally full from Baltimore. As it always was before. Yes. Now, today we have a full flight and it's like, well, <laughs> Yep. And it wasn't bad. I mean, the flight down and back were fine. I just like how they were like, hey, social distance when you debark the plane. When everybody's like, I want to get off of this plane because we have masks. And literally, we've been not social distance for the four and a half hour flight. And, and here's the thing, folks, don't take this the wrong way. We need to wear a mask, but at the same time, we're wearing a mask for five and a half 
hours on that flight down with it, it was you know we're doing our part but man it gets uncomfortable after a while yeah i mean i have to wear a mask for work all day every day pretty much true. so it's nothing new true i just didn't want to take my mask off at all no. just because it was like we're all combined like i'm not taking my mask off some other observations the strip itself walking around i would say it was about 75 percent full when we got there wednesday night it was dead it was average i mean I compared walked- to how it is oh absolutely but as the weekend picked up yeah saturday and i especially when we walked around a little bit i felt like it was about 75 percent full wednesday was way less crowded because a lot of stuff was closed on wednesday too you know like when we were out late on wednesday oh that was a joke i was like i can't find a place to get a drink i just wanted to have a drink and i couldn't find a bar that was open and then there's all the non-working escalators as usual nothing has changed there downtown people also weren't wearing masks as well as they were on the strip i thought and this is a tip for everybody if you want to go to your favorite lounge make sure you check your reservations or websites things are open especially on like friday saturday sunday they're going to be open but if you're there monday through thursday some things might not be open so make sure you check about that yeah and a lot of restaurants actually have takeout available too so you can enjoy it in your room like they're really promoting that i noticed as well they were then i thought that was really good Ride shares from what we saw, even though a lot of you have been to Vegas that are listening to this channel, hate taxis. A lot of people I've been seeing are on the comment boards and message boards are saying right now, the best bets probably taxis or rental cars, even though you got to watch about getting long hauled. It's probably going to be your better bet until like the ride shares kind of get back. As I mentioned earlier, slots and VP kind of bonuses were not as generous. Street performers on the strip even at night that were kind of non-existence downtown they were there but and there were still quite a few of them but it, downtown there was but it was yeah. more of like weirder ones like sax man wasn't there and yeah, like the kiss was, people it was like homeless dude doing the jig to music yeah. or like there was tons of drummers and on there's it. lots of these guys just standing there was a the thing that says like x amount of money to start the show i felt that was very odd and then on the strip, it was mostly, I saw like maybe one or two like Mickey Mouse costume people yeah. walking around. Apparently, while we're out there, and I did not see any, the slappers are out there. But oh, they're I very, the slappers. but they're very, very far and few between. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, it's, it's basically people are out there selling escorts and uh, they give you like a little trading card. And there's like <laughs> a internet thing where people collect them. I didn't know this. I thought I was just odd, but apparently people do collect them. They, they must have really like cleaned up that. Cause remember the streets used to be just littered oh, with those. It was but bad. Just, the sidewalks along the strip are way cleaner now. Like, and that's a good thing. That is a good thing. One thing I did notice too, walking out of is when I did a tour, the Grand Bazaar, man, a lot of those shops in some of the areas were closed. Some of the curio shops, I hope they come back. Sanitation. I felt the winner of this was MGM Resorts and Casinos. Mm-hmm. They won this because they have nice little sinks. There were sanitation stations all over. Yeah, it wasn't they just were, like hand sanitizer. They actually had like hand washing stations in the casino. The Caesar properties, they had tons of fan- sanitizer stations. They weren't promoting social distancing when I was walking through a lot of them. I felt that MGM was really doing a better job than that. The D Circa, they did a pretty good job with the hand sanitizer, and but again, for downtown, they didn't really have any washing stations. It was kind of just like, eh. And don't expect a whole lot of social distancing if you go to stadium swim while you're in the pool. <laughs> uh, or any yes. pool for that fact. Or any pool. Yeah. yeah. It really is hard at times to keep social distancing. You could even see, see people were trying to, mm-hmm. like there'd be a massive flow of people coming your way and you see people kind of curving to the side yeah. more than other times. You know, I hope they keep some of these things that they're doing, such as the hand washing station yeah. I, that we kept saying that. Hand like, washing is always a good idea. Yeah, I, I actually like that. And I like how some of the people were wiping down the games and just, that's nice. The last thing I want to talk about is the crowd. It was an odd crowd, especially downtown. The strip was kind of normal. But downtown, it was, uh, and what we're talking about specifically, and this is a PSA to all parents out there, (laughs) do not bring your kids to Las Vegas if you can. If you do happen to bring it, because I mean, hey, I went to Vegas when I was eight. I had a great time. But we saw kids out like 2 a.m. in the morning. You you can bring your kids to Vegas, but... 
why on earth are you having them out at 2 a.m., okay? I saw a dad at the casino. The kid was there, and, like, it was their second night there, and the kid's like, Dad, I want to go to bed. And he's like, oh, we got to wait for Mom to finish up. And I was like, okay, wow. The kid wants to go to bed, and you're just going to let Mom finish gambling. Okay, why don't you take him to bed? And then when we were driving to the airport at 3.30 in the morning, we were going down the side strip, you know, where there's all these homeless people, and there's, like, these kids running with their parents going to their hotel at 3.30 in the morning on Sunday night, on uh, Monday morning. I'm like, what? So, yeah, just a PSA. If you're going to take your kids to Vegas, cool. Not judging you. There's a lot of fun things for kids to do. They can go circus, circus, and there's just stuff to do. But don't keep them out to 2 a.m. in the morning. That's the time for the adults. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else to add on those observations? No, I mean, I think that pretty much hit it there. I mean, like I said, you know, it's good to see Vegas getting back to kind of normal, but still being safe about, the, you know, I was impressed with the amount of masking and sanitizing and social distancing. Like, I didn't know what to expect with that. I was impressed with how the resorts, the casinos were handling all that stuff and how, like, I'd say a lot of the crowd was compliant with it. You know, you're always going to have some people that refuse to do that, especially where we come from. But it was uh, I'm starting to feel like the Vegas of old. Most definitely. All right, guys. So next time, Kay and I are going to go over kind of some of the new properties we checked out, our restaurant review, kind of some new items that we visited, and just a couple other little odds and ends. On the way out, make sure you hit like, click subscribe, leave a comment. If you like this episode, let us know. And I'll see you next time on Talking Vegas All Day with me, K.A.